Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Kitubot. We are up to Perikei Mishnah Tet. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbaev Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelo Ben Chanabat Miriam, Menuchatam Began Eden Amen, Leavdi Ben Chaim Lechaim, Vede Refua Shenemav Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shach Ole Yisrael. The Mishnah begins, Noten Lah Ma'a Chesed Retzorka, he must give her one silver ma'a. A ma'a is one sixth of a dinar or a zuz each week for her minor needs, such as laundering and using the bathhouse. And she has the right to eat with him every Friday night. Even if they agreed not to eat together, he must eat with her on Friday night because that is the night of marital relations. And one should engage in marital relations on Friday night in order to fulfill the mitzvah of enjoying Shabbat. A wife's handiwork or income can be divided into two parts, the standard amount to which a husband is entitled in return for the support he provides her, and the extra amount, which is anything she makes in excess of the standard amount, to which a husband is entitled in return for the weekly silver ma'ah. If he does not give her the silver ma'ah for her minor needs, and she makes more than the standard amount of handiwork, her extra handiwork is hers to keep, and the husband has no right to it. And the Mishnah, the Mishnah specifies the standard amount of handiwork that a wife must produce for her husband each week. What is the standard amount that she must do for him? For example, if her work is spinning wool, she must spin warp threads that weigh five cellars in Yehuda, which is the same as ten cellars in the Galil. A cellar in the Galil has half the weight of a cellar in Yehuda. Or mishkal esel slaim erev biyuda shen eslim slaim begalil, or weft threads that weigh ten cells in Yehuda, which is the same as twenty cells in the Galil. The warp threads are the long threads that remain in place on the loom. The weft thread is woven in and out of them. Since the weft threads are handled all the time, they must be thicker than the warp threads, and therefore weft threads are easier to spin and are worth half as much as the same weight of warp threads. The Mishnah cites an exception to some of the rules stated in this and the preceding Mishnah. If she was nursing a child, the amount of handiwork she must produce is reduced because she needs time to attend to the child. And her food allowance is increased, meaning the husband must give her foods that increase her milk because it is the husband's responsibility to feed his young children as the Gemara says on page 65b in Mesechet Kitubot. Now the previous Mishnah mentioned specific amounts of food and other items that husband must provide his wife, two calves of wheat, half a cup of legumes, etc. Our Mishnah explains that these amounts are not enough in all situations. In what case were those words stated? In the case of a poor Jew who cannot afford anything more. But in the case of a wealthy Jew, everything depends on his level of wealth, meaning he must treat his wife in a manner that befits a man of his means. He must also treat her in accordance with the local practice. Now the general rule is that she goes up with him, but she does not go down with him. As the Gemara says on page 61a in Mesech Ketubot. This means that if the husband is wealthier than her family, he must raise her to his standard of living and treat her in a manner that befits his higher status. On the other hand, if the husband is less affluent than his wife's family, he may not bring her down to his level. Rather, he must support her in the manner to which the members of her family are accustomed. And the two in Shulchanuch discuss this in Evan Ezel, chapter 7, the Halakha 1. That is in Abotai of chapter 5, Mishnah 9. We continue now with... Perik Vav Mishnah Aleph. This Mishnah discusses the rights that a husband has with respect to property, either money, land, movable objects that his wife receives from various sources. Mitziate Isha Masedah Lebala, a wife's finds and her work belong to her husband. If a wife picks up a lost object that does not need to be returned to its owner, it becomes the property of her husband. The same is true of income that she earns or objects that she makes or objects that she makes, such as threads she spins from wool. And these laws were already stated in chapter 4 Mishnah 4. They are repeated here to introduce the next part of the Mishnah. The Rushata, however, regarding property that she inherits, he eats its produce in her lifetime, but the property itself belongs to her. A husband has the right to eat the produce of his wife's property, whether she owned it when they got married or acquired it afterward. If the property can generate income, so land that produces crops or a house that can be rented out, he may use it for purposes of profit and the profit is his. If it cannot generate income, it is sold and the money is used to buy productive land, whose produce goes to the husband, as the Mishnah discusses in chapter 8, Mishnah 3. 
Since the property belongs to the wife, she keeps it if her husband dies before her or divorce, divorces her. However, if she dies first, it goes to him because the husband inherits all his wife's possessions. And for this reason, the Mishnah specifies he eats its produce in her lifetime. Since after her death, he is entitled not only to the produce, but to the property itself. And the Mishnah cites a dispute about payments a wife receives for, for being injured, which include payments for the shame she suffered and for her reduction in value. Payments for her shame and her devaluation are hers. They are used to buy land, which is hers to keep, and the husband eats its produce. In fact, one who injures another person must generally pay for five types of damage, shame, devaluation, pain, medical expenses, and inability to earn income, as the Mishnah says in Baba Kama, chapter 8, Mishnah 1. Our Mishnah mentions only two of these, shame and devaluation, because the laws for the other three are obvious. Compensation for pain clearly goes to the wife, since only she suffered the pain. Medical expenses go to the husband, since the husband must pay for his wife's medical treatment, like we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 9. And compensation for lack of income goes to the husband, because her income belongs to him. Rabbi Yudah ben Beter Omer, however Rabbi Yudah ben Beter says, Bizman shebaseter la shne chalakim lo echad. If the injury is on a hidden part of her body, two parts of these payments are hers and one part is his. The husband receives a portion of these payments because the wife is allegedly regarded in some respects as the husband's own property, and therefore an attack on her is like an attack on him, as the Gemara says on page 66a in Mesechet Kitubot. But if the injury is on an exposed part of her body, such as her face, neck, or hands, in which case the husband also suffers, because if the injury can be seen, the husband is embarrassed, and in addition he suffers if that, in that she looks repulsive, two parts of the payments are his and one part is hers. Sheloin aten miyad, his portion, the one third or the two thirds, is given to him immediately and is entirely his. Vishelah ilakach ben kakavu chal perot, and her portion is used to buy land which belongs to her, but he eats its produce. And the Rav does tell us, Valacha ki Rebi Yehuda, the Alacha follows the opinion of Rebi Yehuda. And that is the Nabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Bauch Adunai Leolam, Amen, Amen.